Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Angie, Recovered Alcoholic. I will. <laughs> um, where am I from? I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, and then I moved to Dana Point, and then I moved to Seal Beach, and um, uh, I guess I've been out here in California for a little over two years now. Um, but yes, originally from from Dallas, Texas, and uh, that's where I got sober. And um, I owe a lot to the people um, there in Dallas that uh, showed me and told me um, uh, the truth about alcoholism. Um, My sobriety date is March the 25th of 2006, so I will have uh, four years this week, which is unbelievable. I mean, time goes by so fast. I remember, you know, when my sponsor started sponsoring me, she had a few months, and I thought that was incredible. She had like four months, and I just, how do you get four months? Um, and her sponsor had a couple years, and oh my gosh, how do you get a couple years? Um, and it just flies by, and it's cool because um, I forget my sobriety date. I really do. It is a really, really important date, and I value the date, and I will never forget it. But I don't have to mark off on the calendar anymore every day that I don't drink, every day I'm sober. And I used to do that. I used to go to a meeting that night, okay, I didn't drink today, and mark it off. Okay, I've got two weeks. Okay, I've got, ta- I've got ten days now. I've got, And um, I'm not at all belittle, you know, that, that time. I remember in the beginning, those days me- meant everything. And it was hard to get a 30-day chip. But then after going through the steps and realizing that and seeing and and, and reading what my book says about being able to live life one day at a time, uh, and if I just continue, as I've learned to do, living this life, living by the principles, living by these steps, I don't really think about staying sober every day. You know, I just just live by the principles, and I get to stay sober every day. So... um, but, yeah, I, I was reminded the other day that I have a birthday this week. And it's like, oh, yeah, I do. Cool. And it is a big deal, and I'll be, I'm, I'm excited about it. But I, but I do not, you know, I don't pat myself on the back for it. Um, I didn't get myself sober. I could not go a day without a drink in the end. And the fact that I've been sober for four years now, that's not on my power. There's no way. Um, so for you newcomers out there or just people that, that have been coming recently, um, living proof that this program can work, and there's a lot of living proof in this room. Uh, you know, we want proof that this, that this works, and, and the people in here it is your proof. So just, just look at them. Um, I... Um, I'm a recovered alcoholic, which simply means that I uh, got to work these steps and had an amazing spiritual awakening, and um, the obsession to drink was removed. It's taken away. And I'm not crazy when it comes to alcohol anymore, and I don't struggle with with it anymore. Um, This is a program of action, and um, if I stay in action, I stay sober and happy and free from the obsession to drink. I'm not cured of alcoholism. My book explains it beautifully. My book also tells me over and over that we do get to recover. Um, the, the first 100 recovered. Thank God that gave me tons of hope because I didn't want to be sick for the rest of my life. And all it means is that I've been restored to sanity. Um, can we get sick again? <clears throat> yes. Uh, and I am actually going to share with you tonight my experience in that happening to me. Um, getting sick again and drinking again. I'm a big book thumper, and I'm proud to say it. Uh, I just am. I used to make fun of big book thumpers, and I didn't really even understand what it meant. Uh, and we get teased sometimes, and it's, it's really kind of sad because, you know, all we're doing is following the precise, 
clear-cut directions in the book, and 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 we seem to be the controversial ones sometimes. Um, but uh, all I know is I was in AA for seven to eight years, in and out, in and out, relapse, relapse, then trying my own thing for a year, didn't didn't work out so well. Going back in, go, um, and the the instructions in the book, following them precisely and, and working these steps with a sponsor who um, who went by this book is the only reason I'm here today. Uh, I needed to know what was wrong with me before I could even understand how to get better, and I, and I learned that. I'm not crazy. I wasn't crazy. Um, I, it wasn't about willpower. It wasn't that I just liked to party more than the average person. I had an, an allergy to alcohol. I do have an allergy. I still do. If I put it in my body still today, I will set off the phenomenon of craving, and there's no stopping me. Um, now, the obsession I don't have. Um, but I needed to have that explained to me. I needed to have alcoholism explained to me. I'm going to share with you some of my story. Uh, Huge part of my story is um, how I got well, though, how I got well. My experience in middle of the road AA and my experience in, in, in the real thing, the real deal, uh, what, you know, the way they did it back in the day, the way Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob intended it to be. I can't, I can't get up here and not share that. Um, I'm, I'm glad more people came because at, at the beginning there weren't very many people here, and I thought, oh, they found out I was going to speak again. And they were, of course, making it all about me, you know. Yeah, yeah, they're sitting at home thinking about me. Um, and, you know, we've heard her story. So I thought about making up a story tonight but so y'all wouldn't get bored. But um, I can't do that. My story is my story. It's not my pitch. It's just my experience, and your experience could be absolutely, totally different. Um, that's the cool thing. We all have different experiences, and we're all going to reach someone else. If one person in here hears something from my story, um, from the solution, from what I have to say about this program, I'm happy, and, and, and that's all that matters. <laughs> um, then it's a, then it's, a great, it's a great night. You know? That's my only purpose, not here to, um, to uh, convert anybody. I'm just here to... I'm just here to, to Carry the message. That's the that's my primary purpose. You know, it is. So um, my my story is. You know, I I don't have a really really crazy one. Um, I was raised um, in a very loving family. My parents were divorced when I was six, and um, I was sure that that's why I became an alcoholic because dad wasn't around. And the thing is, the truth that I found out in my fourth step was that he was around. He was 10 minutes away. I blocked him out, um, complained about him never calling me. I never called him either. But uh, I was sure that that was the reason why I dated the jerks that I did, that I had the eating disorder in my early 20s. That I, I mean, I blamed it for everything. Uh, if Dad was only, uh, you know, if he had only stuck around, I would have been molded into this really great, confident, secure woman, and I wouldn't need to drink. I found out that was not true. Alcoholism is not causal. Um, it is genetic. Somewhere way up there, I am the only alcoholic in my family that has, that has qualified themselves and that is in the program. I have a really large family. Somewhere way up there, there is an alcoholic. Um, my uncle is an alcoholic, but he's not, it's not by, by birth, it was uncle by marriage. But um, I, I had my first drink when I was about 13, and it was a drink. It was a sip of beer. Nothing happened. You know, I was just playing around with some friends. Uh, really did not um, start drinking a lot until my late teens. You know, partied, average high school kid. Uh, but... Really, my late teens and my early 20s, I started drinking a little bit more. I, um, I felt not as good as. I felt insecure. I felt fearful. I wasn't moving along as fast as my friends were. Uh, I, was, I, I didn't make really very good grades. Um, and drinking seemed to help. 
um, it worked. It worked. It wasn't like this sudden, oh my gosh, I found the solution to everything and I'm going to drink every day for the rest of my life. No, it didn't happen like that for me. Uh, it just made me feel good. I, um, I could have a few drinks and be really outgoing all of a sudden. I could have a few drinks and really carry on any kind of conversation and, well, pretend like I knew what I was talking about. Um, I could all of a sudden dance way better than, than I could before the drinks. Uh, flirt, great flirter, all of a sudden. It, it just helped. I felt better about myself. You know, I didn't feel better than you. I felt as good as, and that's what I needed. That's where I needed to be. Uh, <clears throat> I, um, it started becoming a problem. Um, I, uh, friends noticed. I started losing some jobs. You know, this is just stuff that happens when we abuse alcohol. And, I mean, this stuff is going to happen, so I'm not going to tell you all this stuff. You know, DWIs, we, we just go through that stuff. That's what we experience. Um, I want to kind of share more about what was going on internally because that's really what the problem was. I, you know, on page 52, it talks about the feeling of useful, uselessness, fear, not able to, to well, I'll, I'll go there because I can't recall exactly what it says. You know, people call them the bedevilments. And this is what I felt like inside. We were having trouble with personal relationships, couldn't control our emotional natures, Prey to misery and depression, couldn't make a living, had feelings of uselessness, full of fear, unhappy. That's what was going on with me. Uh, and once again, I was blaming it on dad leaving. <laughs> I felt this way because, because I, I didn't have both, both parents around. Uh, but it was just a, a, a spiritual, ugh, you know, just not, just not right. Just didn't feel right. And I just didn't know that at this time. So drinking more fixed it. And, and the, the truth is, alcohol is, it was my solution for a very long time, and that's why I kept doing it. I believe that that's why we keep doing it, because it does work for us for a long time until we cross that line into alcoholism, and it doesn't anymore, but we, we cross the line, and we can't go back, and we're screwed. Um, so... Problems happening, losing jobs, driving nieces and nephews around drunk. Um, uh, I'm, I'm in bad relationships. Uh, I'm really dating guys that are just going to party with me, and I really can't stand them when we're sober. I love them to death when we're drunk. And uh, I mean, seriously, we go out partying. I'm all over you. I love you. I love you. Wake up in the morning. Get away from me. Give me a beer and get away from me. Uh, and it's the truth. It's, kind of, it's kind of funny, but it is the truth. It is the truth. Um, but that drink fixed me and made me better inside. Um, it stops working. And um, I do get into some trouble and I'm, I'm sent to AA. Um, I'm still single, but I'm dating a um, guy that I'm married, married to now. Um, and um, I'm going to these AA classes, and this is back in 1996. So the, they're a lot harder on, you know, I didn't have it that hard. I had to do, like, I got two DWs back-to-back, so I had to do <laughs> lots of community service. And, but it was just things I had to do to get this. You know, I just didn't think I was an alcoholic. went to the meetings. I went to this group in Dallas. And um, uh, it did become my home group, and I went every day because they told me to go every day, go to a meeting every day. If you need to go to a meeting twice a day, if you need to go to a meeting to feel good, go, go as many times as you need to. But I really was going at least once a day. Uh, I was not hearing any kind of, although I wasn't really looking for it at that, at that point, any kind of a, a message. Um, I was hearing an awful lot about a lot of other stuff. I, you know, um, you name it, anything under the sun, but not really talking about alcoholism. Like I said, I didn't really care. I wasn't really that concerned. I just needed to make my meeting for the day, get that thing signed, get that court card signed. Uh, I, I continued to drink, and I really did actually try to stop, and I just couldn't stop on my own, but I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why I couldn't stop on my own. I'm going to fast way forward. 
um, go into these meetings, getting in the trouble that I got in, suffering the consequences, um, like the book talks about that we're going to do, um, I, I do realize I have a problem and I can't stop on my own. But I do think it's about willpower. Um, the book explains to me perfectly that it is not about willpower, but I'm not reading the book. I'm not looking in the book. Um, I'm going to the meeting and I'm talking about, about what's going on that day with me and um, how I feel. And, and uh, actually that's making me a little bit worse because I'm also hearing about how everybody else is feeling and I'm leaving the meeting a little bit pissed off. I start going to meetings late, showing up late, and coming up with this big excuse in my head. Like Once again, like everybody's concerned about me, they're all going to notice that Angie's walking in late. So Angie's got to have this big excuse. You know, Grandma was sick, and I had to take her to the... And I'm leaving early, um, rushing out real fast like, and looking at my watch like I've got to be somewhere, like I've got an appointment. I couldn't stand the meetings is my point. I couldn't stand the meetings. Um... And I would go out the back door, and I remember several times going to the beer store and getting some beer and going to this uh, gym parking lot and just drinking, just just getting loaded after the meeting. Uh, I um, don't understand what's wrong with me, but I know that um, that I, I think that maybe I'll just catch it one of these days if I just keep going to enough meetings, because that's what people told me. You know, you just keep coming, just keep coming, just keep coming, and you will catch it. Um, and, you know, I heard a lot of stuff. Fake it till you make it. And, and uh, you know, every time you want to drink, put, put, play that tape in your head. And, and it sounds okay. I'll, I'll try it. None of that worked for me. You know, uh, I say this a lot, but it's just the truth. I, if I could put the plug in the jug and just stop, I would have. You know, I would have. I, I didn't know how to do that. And if you know how to do that and you can do that and pull it off, great for you. You, you don't really need to be here. Um, but I couldn't do that, and um, I, I just don't think AA is working at this point, so I start trying my own stuff, managing it on my own. Um, I try, you know, just don't go to places where there's drinking and avoid this, and I'm missing weddings, and I'm missing a lot of fun stuff, and you know what? That's just pissing me off. That's just making me mad that I can't do that, and, and it's like I can't live without alcohol. Alcohol's everywhere, and I'm thinking that, that – that's what we're supposed to do when you're in AA. You're just supposed to, you have to change your whole life. You have to change all your friends. You have to change all your habits, all the places you go. Um, you know, you have to, you can't really, you shouldn't be on that softball team because afterwards everybody goes to the bar and sometimes there's people drinking at the softball fields and you shouldn't be around that. It's too tempting. Um, and so I'm thinking this is not going to be very fun. I could not imagine not not drinking. And if you're an alcohol, real alcoholic like me, I mean, you understand. How am I not going to drink? I'm going to be so boring. I'm going to be so insecure. I'm going to be so dull. Nobody's going to like me. I'm going to be so scared of everything. I need that confidence. I need it. Uh, I try to manage it on my own. I try self-help books. I try therapy. I go to church. I, I move. I move to San Francisco for a while, thinking if I just change, totally change my friends. Um, I'm running away from me, and I don't even, I don't even know it. Uh, rational recovery was one that I tried, and that didn't really work. I actually was packing some stuff today, and I found that Rational Recovery book. I was going to take it to the half-price bookstore and see how much they could give, give me for it. But um, Is there a half-price bookstore in California? There is in Dallas. The reason I bring that up is uh, I took all my self-help books years ago to the half-price bookstore in Dallas, and I got a lot of money. I mean, because I had like a 100 self-help books. How to, you know, on self-confidence and, and trying to fix myself. If I just had this, if I just felt better inside with enough therapy and all that, enough books, enough Oprah, enough, you know, I will, um, I'll do better and I won't want to drink. I'll feel better and I won't want to drink. Uh, Rational Recovery didn't work. I found that book today and, and it, I, I flipped it open and it said something about the beast inside of you. Um, draw a picture of your beast and wish it away or, you know, and, and those times of struggle, just draw a picture of your beast, which alcohol, you know, and darn it, that would be great if that worked. <laughs> that would be great if that worked. Um, 
uh, I will, I said I was going to skip ahead, and I really didn't, but, I, you know, I, I got, I, I never, um, I never went to a treatment center until I had hit my spiritual bottom, so I did not, you know, go in and out of treatment, or in a, I always detox at home, I didn't know that you're supposed to go to the emergency, I didn't know how dangerous it was, um, I was drinking, I was drinking anything I could that had alcohol in it, um, I was one that drank um, mouthwash a few times, I did drink cooking sherry and red wine vinegar, and because um, it was the only thing in the house, and I searched high and low for it, because I knew there had to be something, some kind of, you know, red wine vinegar with coffee. That's that's great. It worked though. It worked, and that's all I cared about. Uh, I would do anything for it. Um, I would walk to the store at at eight o'clock in the morning in my pajamas and get it. Um, so my my point is, it, I was getting bad, and I could not stop, and I, and I and in and out of AA, and AA doesn't work, and I just wasn't, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do, and I was pretty confident at that time I was going to die of this disease. I was just going to be one of the ones that didn't make it. A lot of us don't, and I'm just going to be one that doesn't. Um, my husband, you know, we get married, and um, I, I get married because I want to get married, but I also think that that's going to fix it, too. I mean, he did too. It just got worse. Um, you know, in the book where it says um, we cannot differentiate the truth from the false, in the doctor's opinion, um, my life became so crazy, but it was my truth, if that makes sense. It was just the way it was, and I can remember, I can remember um, Brad coming home and. Um, one time, and I shared this story with Scott just not very long ago, and I had totally forgotten about it, but I, I remember I would get really in this cleaning mode when I drank. Um, and I would drink and clean, and I remember vacuuming. I did this quite a bit. I remember vacuuming, and I got really hot, so I took my shirt off, and I'm drinking a glass of wine, and it's like 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. And Brad comes home, and, and I'm like naked. <laughs> vacuuming drinking and it wasn't that weird it wasn't strange to me I'm having it you know and and I convinced him after a lot of arguing I really convinced him that that was that was okay that was normal and and I told him there are there are likely other housewives on the street that are (laughs) that drink and, and clean and vacuum naked I mean it's not that crazy I'm you know and I really believed it I really really believed that um, and it's kind of like my uncle, who is an alcoholic, it reminded me of this too. He he had been sober for not very long, but his wife, my aunt, had found a glass in the, maybe sober a month, had found a glass in the cabinet with a little bit of whatever it was, uh, brandy or whatever it was with ice in it. And he <laughs> he convinced her after, well, I don't think that she really believed it, but he was like, no, that's from a month ago. I have not, I have not been drinking. I've been clean for a month. And she's like, there's ice in the glass. No. It's, and, I, and I guess what I'm saying is we lie. We lie, 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 lie. And our life becomes a lie. And I thought it was normal to go through. It wasn't normal, but it's what I had to do. And it wasn't crazy because it's what I had to do. Because I'm an alcoholic, I would I would go through my neighbor's doggy door to steal beer when they were out of town, and it was like you know what? It's not that big of a deal. They're my friends. They're my neighbors. They won't care, you know. They um the, it's in, it's in, it's insanity, but we just don't know it when we're, when we're in it. I went to a um, finally got bad enough. People had suggested treatment, and I was like, no, because that. That's like serious, you know, going to treatment or rehab, that that means that I'm really sick, and that was a tough one, but I was drinking when people told me that that's what I should probably do, and and finally I said, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll go, and I don't even think that it was me that, I know, it wasn't me that agreed to it. Um, I really, I really believe that it was God that said, Okay, I'll go. I mean, I, cause, cause I, 
I knew I, I thought I was going to just die of it, and that was okay with me. I went. I um. I listened. I uh, was in detox for a good ten days, just shuffling around out of it. But when I could finally hear, um, I went to a a big book group at eight o'clock in the morning one morning, and there was a man there. And uh, he he works down at this treatment center, and he got out the big book, and he started reading the doctor's opinion. And I was in and out of AA for seven, eight years, and I never knew there was a doctor's opinion in this book. And y'all might be thinking, oh, come on. You, the meetings you were going to, you've got to have heard some steps or some. Not the ones I was going to. I'm not saying they're not out there. They are. But not the ones I was I was going to. Uh, there weren't books in, in the room. But this man, which is unfathomable, that you would go to an AA meeting and there wouldn't be big books. That's our textbook. We're dying from a disease and we've got a book that tells us how to, precise instructions, how to recover, but there's no textbooks? That just is crazy. But uh, there, there weren't any books in these rooms. But this man told me about the doctor's opinion. And more than that, he explained to me the phenomenon of craving and what happens in my body. Um, I'm just different. My body is just different. And I put alcohol in my body and I set off that craving. And that's it. That's, that's what happens to me. Um, and he explained the, the obsession, you know, um, the, the, the obsession that someday I'll drink normally. The obsession that... that Oh, this time it'll be different. Um, y'all, y'all get that upset, you know, con- not even just constantly thinking about drinking and when's the next time I'm going to be able to do it and all that, but just the, the, it, it, you wake up in the morning and it's like, that's just your life. That's part of your life. I, uh, he told me about page 24 that I'd lost the power of choice and that was everything. That made sense. I didn't choose anymore to drink. I drank no matter what. You know, I thought I was just kind of changing my mind when I would wake up in the morning and decide, you know, I'm not going to drink today and then change my mind. I'd be drinking a couple hours later. I wasn't changing my mind. I had lost. It's all about control, choice and control. I had lost the power of choice and I had lost control. And that's all step one. Um, I, I was told I was scared to death when I got out of this treatment center. I had learned all this stuff about the steps, and I knew that it was a program of action finally, and what I needed was a spiritual experience. It wasn't about making all these meetings. How many, how many meetings do I need to go to to have a spiritual experience? My book doesn't say that. My book says I need to work these steps to have a spiritual experience to get connected to a power that's going to keep me sober. I need to get something between me and the drink, and that power's got to be greater than me. And I'm not necessarily going to, gonna, you know, the reason I'm sober today is not because of the meetings I went to. And it's not because of anybody in the meetings. Love you guys, but y'all don't keep me sober. Meetings are important. Um, but it's just kind of a, a, a bonus, you know. I love to go to meetings to find newcomers. I love to go to meetings to study the book. Um, but when, when I um, left treatment, I didn't know where to go. I didn't have any idea. And, and this man said, here, call my brother. Um, they have a group down in Dallas who, that's, that's all, that's what they're all about. They have a book study and they study the book and they read one sentence um, and they answer a question and they go through, I mean, page by page, line by line, and they talk about it. And it's a fun group. And these people, you know, um, get to the meeting early with their, with their sponsees and they, and they, you know, they're sitting out front on the patio and they're working the steps and they get them through the steps quickly um, because I know that step 12, you know, my book tells me that, that working with others is vital. It's the foundation stone of my recovery, you know, to help others. And I need to hurry and get to the point where I can help others so I can stay sober. So why would I want to take forever to get through these steps? I want to get better, you know, I mean, Doing a step a month was a death, death sentence to me, and I had proven that over the years. You know, I had, I had proven that that was not, that was not working. Um, but these people at this group, they're getting there early, and they're working these steps, and they're all about helping other people. There's, there's this, this list of like 50 people at this group, um, 50 places, that they go and carry the message. They all get together, you know, three or four of them get together, and they have, they have commitments. And they go to these hospitals and they talk to the patients and they carry the message, the one and only message. 
the message that as a result of taking these steps, they've had a spiritual experience, and this is what this is what life is like. Um, and that turned me on. That was pretty cool. Um, I had never really heard that before. And but that was AA. That's the way. That's the way. The, that's what my book says. And so I went to these meetings and I got a sponsor and um, she qualified me. Nobody had ever qualified me before. Asked me those two questions on page 44. If when you honestly want to, um, can you quit entirely? Can you control the amount you take once you start? It qualified me to make sure I was I was the real thing and not just a heavy drinker. I was like I'm not just a heavy drinker. Believe me. <laughs> Believe me, Audrey. Um, but uh, she asked me if I was done, you know, and not 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 just want the bad stuff to stop happening and the bad consequences. And are you are you done, you know, for good and all, for for good? Um, yeah, I am. And she said, if you want what I have, you will do what I do. And um, she went straight from the book, and we did steps one, two, and three in one day. Step one, admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Do I understand what powerlessness means? We went over the doctor's opinion. I have an allergy. I have an obsession. Do you understand what happens when you put a drink in your body? Um, I understood it. Can you admit it? Can you accept it? Yeah. Lost the power of choice. Lost control. Lost the, the, the power of control. Uh, cannot manage that decision to not pick up that drink. Yep. All right, you've done step one. Let's go to step two. Came to believe in a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. Came to believe. Not do you right now believe 100% in a power. Came to believe. Are you willing to believe? Um, I will come to believe, she told me, as I go along with these steps. Guaranteed. I will come to believe in something, something greater than me. Um, am I willing to believe that there's something out there? Something. Yeah, I am. There's got to be. You're sober, <laughs> you know. And she said, do you believe it's working in me? Yeah, I do believe it's working in you. All right, let's move to step three. Got on our knees, we said that prayer. Awkward, praying with somebody on my knees <laughs> at first, but it didn't, it didn't matter. Did I want to do it? Eh. But, you know, I did. Number one. My sponsor told me to. Number two, it's what we, it says it's what we do in the book. We say that prayer. I wanted to get on my knees. I wanted to get humble. And she told me to, and I wasn't going to argue with her. She's a six-foot-tall cowgirl wearing cowboy boots. So uh, step four, she told me I had a week to do it. Moral inventory. I got to see my truth. Uh, I got to see, um, I got to write down everybody I was pissed at, why I was mad at them. Um, I was sure that I played no part. I was sure that these people were just jerks and losers and did me wrong, and boy was I wrong when we sat down into the fifth step. I got to see that um, my basic instincts were, were threatened in some way. Uh, I got to see that the part that I played in those relationships. I got to see what was blocking me from God, the dishonesty and the selfishness and the self-centeredness and arrogance, and, and I was a drama queen, and, and uh, I wore masks, and I was afraid of what everybody thought of me. Um, Step five, sat down and talked about it. Steps, you know, boom, 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 boom. That's what we did. You know, I got to step nine and started making my amends. I made two amends, and I patted myself on the back, and I said, I can take a break now. I've done so good. Yeah. <laughs> it was only like three weeks into it, and two, week, two, three weeks into it, and I thought, I've, I've done good. She wanted me to start carrying, which was a big mistake, as my, I wanted to clear up. Um, I felt that I, I started really feeling the freedom from making these amends. Um, but she wanted me to start carrying the message with her right away because um, it was my understanding, as my book says, we don't do all of our amends before we start 10, 11, and 12. I, I still wouldn't be doing 10 if that was the case. Uh, I get right on 10, 11, and 12. Uh, she wanted me to carry the message with her. She wanted me to um, start telling my story, and I was scared to death. She wanted me to start sponsoring people. She had asked me, have you had the obsession removed? We went back into the back of the book where it's, the spiritual experience, she said, have you, has this happened for you? Yes, it has. And I knew it had. I hadn't thought of a drink in two weeks, and that was just amazing. Um, for a drink like me to not think of the, it was like, what, what was the big deal? Um, but I was scared to death to speak. I was scared to death to go to the treatment centers 
and carry the message. And um, I lied and lied and lied about why I couldn't go. And I made up stuff for a long, long time. And I put it off and put it off. And sometimes I would go, but I would on purpose leave my book in the car and say, well, I don't have my book and I have all my notes in my book, so I can't get up and talk to the patients because I really need my notes. I mean, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. I thought it was about me and, if, oh, what if I don't say the right thing? What if they'd laugh at me? I thought it was about public speaking. Oh, I'm the bad, you know, I, nah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to look stupid. Um, making it all about me, 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 me. Full of fear. Full of fear. Dishonesty. I quit talking to God. Long story short, in a matter of about five days, I'm drinking. And I stayed drunk for about three days. Four days. And um, so we can get sick again. If we quit doing what we're supposed to be doing, we can get sick again. Um, But I'll tell you what, living in 10, 11, and 12 is absolutely the, the best. It is easy. It is a pleasure. Um... Ten, watching out for fear, dishonesty, if I if that stuff crops up because it's going to. Talk to somebody about it immediately, make amends if I need to, ask God to remove it, then get out of myself. You know? Don't go take a bubble bath and have an Angie day and go do something nice for myself. Get out of get out of myself and go help another person. Turn my thoughts to somebody else. Works every time. Works every time. Simple. Eleven, stay connected to God, you know. Twelve, carry the message, sponsor people, talk to somebody after a meeting, tell the newcomer about the, you know, make sure they have a book, make sure they, they, they uh, ask them if they have a sponsor, you know, carry the message, help, help others. Easy, pleasure, guess what I get when I do that? Freedom from alcohol, freedom from self, freedom. Don't think about drinking. And my book promise me, promises me that's what's going to happen. So you can't get me to shut up today. <laughs> I was so afraid to, to, to carry the message and can't get me to shut up, sorry to say. Um, it, is, um, it is our primary purpose. It's my primary purpose. Um, my book tells that the tradition, is it five, tradition five, that says our soul, the sole purpose of a, of a meeting is to carry the message. Um, that's the sole purpose. So I ask that the meetings that you, that you guys are going to, um, think about the format. Think about, are y'all carrying the message in that, in, in that meeting? Um, it's just something that we all need to look at every now and then. Um, you know, if selfishness and self-centeredness is the root of my troubles, then going to a meeting and just talking about myself and what's going on and that I have a, a, a dental surgery on Friday and I'm, I'm not looking forward to it. And I heard a lady the other day talk about the cold that she has, that she's mad that she has a cold, and she talked about it for 10 days. I mean, for 10 minutes. Um, and sorry, you know, we get sick. But what about the newcomer? What about the person that's walking in the room that cannot figure out how they're going to leave tonight and not go drink? You know, let's talk about, let's help him with that. Um, I love going to meetings. I love going to meetings where, where there's, there's solution and there's positive and there's hope. You know, I love, that's what, that's the point. That's the point. Um, life today is is great. I mean, it's just I have I have problems. Shoot, I have problems helping my ex husband right now move out of his house. Um, money, ugh, you know, on my own for the first time. <laughs> I got stuff going on, but it's okay. It's okay. I rely on something greater than me. Um, and I keep uh, just do, just just living by these principles as best I can. I screw up all the time. I screw up all the time. But we have these steps to get through it. Uh, I can walk through this stuff with dignity and grace because I just try my best to rely on God. Um, I just I, I I have no control over anything. No control over anything. And if we think that we do, we're just we're wrong. <laughs> we're wrong. Um, 
Life today is really, really good. I have a ton of friends in this program. I have a ton of friends out of this program. Uh, I can come and go as I, as I please. I, I go to, with friends that are not alcoholic, that drink a lot. I, I go to parties with them, and, and um, it's okay. It's cool. If they're not alcoholic, I'm like, drink up, buddy. Have fun. Um, I couldn't do that until I got through these steps and recovered, you know, of course. But, but that's the freedom of it. And my book talks about that on page, uh, I think, 100 to 103. It talks about that we can do what, what you wouldn't think we're, we're allowed to do or are supposed to do. We can, we can, um, I want to walk free. Shoot. If I had to hide from alcohol, I'd just drink. I would just drink. It's, it's impossible. We're not supposed to hide from it. Um, I want to thank you guys for listening, and I want to thank Rob very much for for um, being the 10-minute speaker tonight. Um, last minute, my uh, a girl I sponsor uh, couldn't make it, and Rob is was I mean, I'll do it, sure. I just asked him, and he didn't even he didn't even. I, this guy is so willing to do. He always is. He goes to our Thursday night meeting, and I mean, he's there willing to, the service work is incredible. He's there every time. Um, and I appreciate it. I really, really do. And um, really enjoyed what you had to say, too. And I thank you guys, um, gals. Um, it's an honor to be able to um, carry this message and share my experience. And um, hopefully, um, you know, we're all here. We're all just alcoholics. We're all just alcoholics learning from each other. And um, these steps is, is why I'm sober today. And that is my main point, and that's really my only point. And um, if you don't have a sponsor, new people, get a sponsor that's going to get you through the steps in a pretty pretty reasonable amount of time. There's no – we don't have time to wait because this disease kills us. Um, so you can get out – so you can get well and you can get out there and, and start helping other people. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.